We are happy to have you back. We are joined, as always, by Greg Engert, Beer Director for the Neighborhood Restaurant Group, a James Beard Award nominee. The group includes Partisan and Red Apron right next door in Penn Quarter. Also, a Red Apron next to B-Side in uh, Merrifield. Check that out. Greg, it is always good to see you. You too, Brian. What is on tap this week? This week we have a nice uh, autumnal treat from our friends at the Brooklyn Brewery Ooh. out of Williamsburg uh, in New York City in Brooklyn. There's a um, coffee cup on the side. Yes, must indeed. Be something to come. I'll this is going to be. Uh, now. Uh, this is uh, the. In it's called uh, ba uh, barrel aged, um, intensified barrel aged coffee porter. So an imperial porter. Um, a little bit more round and smooth and less dry and chocolatey than, than an Imperial Stout would be from these guys. Uh, that's been aged for a few months in Kentucky bourbon barrels. Um, and then finished with um, some coffee, but it's uh, a specific uh, delicious kind of coffee. It's from El Salvador. Uh, it is a Finkel Almanzano um, single origin coffee that's then um, shipped and roasted by Blue Bottle, which is um, out of the Bay Area, Oakland, but now they're all over the place. Uh, they make a, uh, roast great coffee out of Blue Bottle. They cold steep it and blend it into the beer. Um, and is that is the cold steeping a different process than, than other coffee yes. beers? Yeah. Oh uh, no, most people or, are or, using cold steeping okay. now. But yeah. Oh my, what a nice mix. And it has, oh, and the Imperial Porter sweet. base is a really great base for this, for a coffee based beer because it's got that creamy smoothness. It's almost latte ish on the palate, that silky texture. Um, it's, uh, it's delicious. And the cold steeping we mentioned. So, one of the big keys about using coffee and beer is you try to do everything you can to keep the acid low. Um, when you warm hot brew coffee, you tend to promote a lot of acid. Um, and maybe a little bit of an astringent acrid quality, and that can go haywire in beer. So cold steeping is gentler on the bean, and it just kind of leaches out flavor without bringing out too much acid. The specific El Salvadorian um, single origin beans that they're sourcing too are known for being a low acid, kind of sweeter, lush uh, bean. So that also affects the, um, the character of the beer. I wonder how this would be with my mother-in-law's coffee. She uh, uh, leaves it in the pot for about two or three days. Oh, God. <laughs> It starts out as crystals, too. It's Folgers, yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, Folgers crystals. Uh, yeah, time for a new pot of coffee. Well, it's uh, interesting. Blue Bottle, um, you know, I mean, they're, they're one of the most famous uh, coffee roasters and coffee companies in America now. And, you know, they were among the first people to really go crazy for knowing your farmers and sourcing uh, fair trade beans from, from um, the family farms uh, throughout, uh, you know, South America, Central America, and beyond Ethiopia, et cetera. Um, but one of their other tenants is, they roast coffee beans and it gets sold within two days. Like it doesn't sit on the sh shelf too long and stuff like that. And so presumably when Brooklyn gets it and they use those beans, they're using really fresh coffee. And I think you can sense that. It's got a real big, bold, fresh coffee quality to it. I, I've said it before, I'm not a big fan of coffee beer, but the, the coffee taste is so mild. And, and again, like last week, we were talking about that right on your tongue. Uh, the end is a lot of bourbon. I mean, not, not too boozy, but... No. Um, that's where it comes really in. Really nice. But it's cool. That, yeah, there's like really cool f phases of this beer. Like in the nose, <laughs> I get more of the coffee. Mm -hmm. And on the palate, you're right. It starts off and it kind of blends then into the chocolate, the nuttiness, the dried berry fruit of the beer. And then in the finish, there's a little bit of wood and oak and that hints of bourbon. Um, so nothing's kind of fighting with each other. I would buy that. Uh, what would you pair this with? I mean, I think breakfast uh, <laughs> yeah right coffee <laughs> or anything but yeah bacon i was having you know i i love um uh i was just in i was just in burlington vermont which is a uh, <laughs> college town college towns have lots of breakfast places uh and um and it reminded me when i used to live in dublin i love irish breakfast you know like you get like the thick cut rasher yeah. ham and yeah. like the mushrooms and the baked beans and everything that would be great with this um for sure and then um some other cool things to try, though, um, avocados and, and coffee and really? roasty flavors hmm. are really cool together. Okay. Some avocados are kind of like creamy and earthy. Um, so guacamole in this beer is fantastic. Wow. If you do a little bit of like grilled fish tacos with like a citrus salsa, that would be awesome too. You think about like lemon peel and espresso, that kind of flavor would play in nicely. And then uh, the other day, I just think about red velvet cupcakes, you know, like beets. Um, it's fall time. We're going to start getting some really great roasted beets out there. It's like a roast beet salad with some 
um, you know, nuts and like a little bit of goat cheese would be great with this as well. Uh, what does this ring in at? 11.8% alcohol. Good morning. <laughs> well, Brooklyn does it again. Greg, thank you as always. Thank you. Everyone, please always do drink responsibly and be sure to bring your thirst next time for another beer of the week.